Hello everyone, my name is Helen Capehart and I'm super excited to present to you Where's the Real Adult? Tips and Tricks to Find the Right Mentor for You. And this is part of the Swatter Striving for Greater Professionals webinar series and I'm super excited to bring you some, hopefully some great tools that you can use to help you find the real adult in your life. First, I'd like to give you a brief synopsis about myself. Um, first, we're going to start with my membership. So, I'm a life member of the Ada New Chapter at Southeastern Oklahoma State University of Kappa Kappa Psi. I'm also an RN member of the Southwest District of Kappa Kappa Psi. I've had the pleasure of being able to serve in a multitude of areas, such as, most recently, SWATA Board of Directors from 2015 to 2019, where um, from 2017 to 2019, I served as chair of the board, and before that, I served as membership director for the two years before that. I've also been able to serve as a Kappa Kappa Psi curriculum advisor from 2017 to the present, and so I've been able to go through a few processes with my VPMs and see how the Road to Wisdom works well. Also, I've been able to serve on some national committees since 2017, particularly the nominations committee, um, also, I served, or I have served, on the Kappa Kappa Psi AA Awards Committee and Musicianship Committee. Also, last but not least, um, I've served on the South Georgia Council from 2012 to 2014. Um, I served as Secretary Treasurer from 2012 to 2013, and then as District President from 13 to 14. Currently, I am the Head Middle School Director and an assistant high school director at Bridgeport ISD. So I'm in charge of the 6th uh, through 8th curriculum at our middle school while I co-teach some of the beginner classes um, and assist with our concert band. I am the director of our top middle school ensemble, our symphonic band. And then at the high school, I help with concert band, marching band, mariachi, and any other areas that I am able to assist with. All right, so our next slide is an overview of this presentation. First, we're gonna talk about how to find the best mentor, mentor for you based off of your wants and needs. That's a big thing that we want, really wanna talk about and make sure that you know that you are in control of your situation. Second, um, I wanna talk about creating ways to have a successful mentorship. So once you've started this process, we have to keep the momentum going or the success um, starts to decrease and hopefully, and unfortunately you start to lose some of your um, potential gains if we are not co continuing to create a successful program. And lastly, if the mentorship is not working, what can you do next or what to do next? Um, hopefully this is not a case, but as always, just in like relationships, either platonic or romantic, sometimes things in. And so we want to make sure that we do this in a way that is respectful of your mentor and that also leads you to success in your next endeavors. All right, so tip number one. First, we want to decide what you want in your mentorship. This is a big thing. If you're not sure what you want yet, then maybe it's time, maybe it's a possibility for you to wait and postpone until you've ready, readily decided what you want. So we're gonna talk about a few types of member mentorships. Now these are not all of them, but these are the ones that I'm most familiar with and um, I also feel that are most common. First is traditional, which is your one-on-one, -on -one, one mentor to one mentee. This is your most common within your companies or your school districts or maybe your Greek organizations or places of worship. Um, and these are very successful, just as all the other mentorship programs are as well. But this is probably the one that you've heard of the most or you've seen the most. Next is distance mentoring. Um, this is where it can be traditional or it can be the next type of mentorship, but you and your mentor are not in the same location. So this might have to be done online, such as through Zoom, Skype, or Google Hangouts. Lastly, group mentoring. So this is two different areas. This could either be where there are a group of mentors helping a group of mentees. And so you're getting a lot of different um, experience levels and information. This could also be one mentor to a group of mentees. 
This could also be a large group or a group of mentors to one mentee. So there's different ways that this type of mentorship can occur, but usually when you have more than one mentor or mentee, this is when we consider it a group mentorship. So some areas of mentorship that you can start to identify what would be best for you um, are personal development. So this could be financial, spiritual, communicative, intrapersonal, interpersonal, whatever you decide what those, what that area could be. Now this is very broad. Um, you might want to be more specific with that, but this is a good place to start if you're unsure. Another area of mentorship is career development. Maybe you're wanting to um, build some skills in your workplace, whether that be mechanical or whether that be um, networking or just skills in your job career. But this is another opportunity for you to get mentorship from. Um, skills development. Now, this could be part of personal development or career development. But it might also be something that's not as specific to either one as well. This may be, oh, I want to learn how to crochet. Well, that might not necessarily be considered as personal development or career development. It might be just something that you want to learn how to do. So that's an opportunity to get a mentor from that. Also, networking. Again, this can be part of personal or career development, or this could just be social development in this sense, um, where that is a subset of personal development, but it's very specific. Now, these are not all the areas of mentorship that you can come up with. There are a plethora of ideas, but these are, the, these are usually the four that are most common, such as the types of mentorships that we have above. Tip number two, find your best route. Now, there's a couple of things that we're gonna talk about. Um, there's three routes that I'm most common or most familiar with, and I wanna bring those to your attention. First is mentorship programs. This is where you are using the expertise of a organization or maybe your company, and they are providing you a mentor that they feel best suits you. Um, since I'm a music educator, the one that I know of very, very well is through Team EA, which is the Texas Music Educators Association. Um, they have a mentorship program for either first year teachers or brand new to Texas teachers. And so this would be an, a work organization based program. So if you're within a union that might have an opportunity or if you're um, connected to other work organizations, this would be a great place to start to see if they have a mentorship program and if you'd be interested in working with that. Um, next, Greek organization-based programs, such as what's going through TBSAA. Um, TBSAA has a great program where um, they connect sisters to other sisters across the country. So this would technically be probably one that is um, distance mentoring. You may not be able to connect with someone that's down the street from you, but this is another mentorship program where you are able to rely on or an organization that you're connected to to bring to you the best mentors that connect or that will connect to you best. Next is within your own company, school district, or church. Um, I was fortunate enough being a brand new, brand new teacher to Bridgeport ISD um, that I was able to get a mentor through the high school campus um, that I work at as an assistant. Now, I'm not a brand new teacher to the profession, but I was brand new to the district. And so that was really nice to have someone who had been in the district for a very long time. And that was able to provide me some tips and tricks and tools to make my first year at Bridgeport a very successful year. And they were able to just answer any questions that I had. So there might be something within your company itself, your school district, or your church. Sometimes you're wanting to do personal development, such as maybe spiritual development. This would be a great place for you to find that. Also, career-based mentorship could come through your church as well. You might have some individuals who were kind of in the same field you do, and they'd be glad to um, assist you in that realm. The next type of route could be the private route as I like to call it. This is usually where you're finding someone within your circle of colleagues that you know, or you are getting references from knowledgeable sources to find a mentor that would be good for you. Those are both two areas that you can try to find those. 
the way the reason why this is a private route is because you're not going through a program that's already been established to help you find a mentor you're having to do some research and some um information gathering on your own if you feel like this would be a great option for you there's definitely ways that you can do this um First, check with your, like I said, check within your circle of colleagues. There might be some people who are great at mentorship that you may or may not know of, and um, your colleagues can kind of lead you to that, to those connections. The last route that I like to talk about is the unofficial mentorship. For me, this is when you are using the guidance of an individual who is knowledgeable and successful in their craft, but this is not someone that you personally know or that you know from a circle of colleagues or that you've been connected to through um, a mentorship program. This might be someone like a financial guru such as Dave Ramsey. Um, this could be a spiritual leader that you feel really connected to and would like to um, kind of follow their steps to to lead a more purposeful life if that's your choice um, also this could be someone like an entrepreneur if you're going through that route finding someone who's had lots of success in their companies and watching and experiencing and reviewing their techniques and skills to make your entrepreneurship more successful in this mentorship this is very individually based so this is not somewhere where you're going to you probably will never get to meet this person. If you do, it's probably because you're going to a seminar that they're hosting or maybe a book signing or something that they are there and you're able to connect with them. But this is not necessarily someone that you're going to be checking in every day or every few weeks, kind of figuring what they're doing and, and having them help you. You are doing the research yourself, such as you're studying their techniques, you're reading different literatures that they've brought out, whether it be books or blogs or vlogs, and then identifying how they're how their skills can benefit you. Like I said, this could be someone in personal development, career development, spiritual development, networking, social skills, skills development, such as like crocheting or other activities, painting. Um, and so you are, you are the one seeking out that mentorship and you are finding the information that you need. Tip number three is plan an initial meeting. This is a big thing for me. Whether you are planning or whether you're planning to meet your person in real life or if you're having to meet them online, maybe you're doing a distance mentorship. Here's some things that I want you to, to consider before you um, step into actually starting a mentorship with this person. Make sure you meet in a space that you are comfortable, whether that be the local coffee shop or in the break room at your work, or whether this be if you're more comfortable on Google Hangout than Skype. Communicate that and see if there's a way that you can make that happen. Um, you should never have to feel uncomfortable asking for a mentor or for guidance from that mentor. Number two, have some questions ready. Be very specific about what you're wanting. Um, you don't necessarily want to go into the meeting not having a plan. And so having some specific questions, not a ton, just a couple, um, having some specific questions that are ready of, readily available for you to ask that person will hopefully help you to get to know your potential mentor a little bit better and to see if it's a good fit. Three, take your time. Do not expect that this initial meeting is you're going to meet them and then ask, hey, will you be my mentor? Take your time, meet them a few more times, but this first initial meeting is kind of get a feel for their vibe. If it connects, plan another meeting and start asking and ask some more questions until you feel comfortable to be like, yes, this is the person that I think would be great for me. And then you can start that mentorship program and ask them for that. As I said, compatibility is key. Just like a platonic relationship or a romantic relationship, you have to take steps to make sure that this is, a, this is a connection that is going to be meaningful and worthwhile. If you rush in through it, then your success rate decreases, or as I believe your success rate decreases, and you're not, hope, unfortunately you might not have a, as a successful relationship with this mentor if you would, or you could have, if you would have taken more time, okay? Um, we'll talk a little bit later about what if that combat compatibility is not there um, and some steps that you can take to kind of either help that along or to terminate the mentorship if you've decided to go ahead through it.
But anyway, make sure you take your time and check to see if it's a connection for you. Okay. Tip number four, how to build the relationship or build the relationship. Here's a great thing that you can get to do. Get to know your mentor besides in a professional setting. Um, something that I've always heard and I've kind of kept it kept it um, in the back of my mind is if you do not feel comfortable with this person enough to possibly be friends with them outside of your mentorship program, then this is probably not someone for you. So this is a great way for you to, get, you don't have to necessarily always be business with this person. Get to know them. Um, maybe ask what their likes and dislikes are. Again, maybe meeting in a, in a comfortable setting if you're able to meet in person like a coffee shop or a bookstore or um, someplace where you can kind of get to talk and it's not always just, hey, I have this problem and how, do, how can you help me fix this kind of situation. Okay. Ask how you can contribute to the relationship. This is not a give, give, give and you take, take, take kind of thing. This is where there needs to be kind of an ask and receive, give and take situation. Um, the mentor should not be the only person working on this relationship. Just like in a platonic or a romantic relationship, both parties have to communicate and both parties have to make the relationship work. Okay, number three, set SMART goals. So this is something that you, this is an activity that you and your mentor can do together is setting some goals, which are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. These are things that you want to consider when you're, when you are planning goals, whether it be separately or together when you're meeting in one of your mentor meetings. Um, if your goals are not specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, or timely, they're probably not going to be successful for you to achieve. And we want to make sure that this mentorship program gets you exactly what you need to keep progressing into being a real adult. Okay. Next thing is ask for honest feedback. Um, this is not a time where kind of like, oh, my baby's doing so good and I'm so proud of them kind of situation. This You're asking this mentor for their guidance and advice because you want to be the best that you can be. And asking for honest advice is going to help you with that. And honest feedback is going to help you with that. Um, if, you, if you're just wanting someone to kind of cheer you along and not provide you with maybe some things that you need to work on, then maybe a mentorship is not is not where you're at right now. Um, maybe doing something like the unofficial mentorship where you're watching and learning from others from a distance is maybe more um, congruent for you to use. Communicate your needs. Just like I said, platonic or, or romantic relationships, you have to communicate what you need and there has to be some give and some take. So if you're not communicating with your mentor on what you need to be successful, then they don't know exactly how to make their individual program for you work best. Okay. And lastly, always make sure to thank them for their mentorship. Um, whether it be something that it's a semester long or a few weeks or even years, make sure you take time to thank them because as you are, your mentor is probably a very, very busy person. They may, may either have other jobs or other activities that they're a part of, have a growing family. You never know what those situations are unless you build the relationship. But either way, um, because they are busy, very busy, they're taking time out of their, their schedules in their lives to assist you the best way that they know how. And so thanking them goes a long way. It makes the relationship a much more connected situation if you do that. No. These are all tips that are like, yes, everything's great and and great and wonderful and the relationship's going good. But what if the relationship is going not so good? Tip number five is know when it's time to move on. So we're going to talk just a brief bit about um, some things that maybe you need to consider as to reasons why maybe the mentorship is not going to work any longer or... And what do you do if you decide that that relationship is no longer productive for you? First, let's talk about reasons to no longer work with your mentor. The first one could be mentor goes rogue. 
meaning that you initially met, everything clicked, and then as you've been working together, they're doing some things that you're not quite comfortable with or that you wouldn't necessarily do yourself or agree with. Now this might happen, and there, there are definitely times where, where this is an opportunity for you to grow from that, and maybe learn some, some different techniques to deal with that situation than the way that you would have. So this is not necessarily a bad thing, but if this is something that's making you uncomfortable, that, then that would definitely be a reason to not work with your mentor. Next, maybe you and your person are mismatched. So you went through the, let's say you went through the mentorship program through your work or your Greek organization or social organization, um, and everything seemed great, but then as you've worked together, you've communicated your needs, y'all been talking back and forth, but it's just not meshing together. That is a reason why it's okay for you to no longer with your, work with your mentor, just because um, do not make yourself feel uncomfortable if, again, if you feel like you and this person would probably not be friends outside of the mentorship, it's probably not a great match, and that's okay. Next would be not enough training for a mentor or mentee. I will definitely say either way, there needs to be some training for both parties before you go into a program. Hopefully those who, who are a part of a mentorship programming service, they've been able to do some training. Um, for you, that might be through your undergrad where you're doing some leadership classes or um, in your student, like if you're a teacher, maybe during your student teaching, that's a great opportunity to kind of see how a mentorship program can work for you. Um, but if there's not enough training, that could be a reason why the relationship is not working um, and maybe a reason for you to no longer work with your mentor. That might also mean that maybe maybe the person you have right now is just not enough for you. Um, and that's where it comes down to, well, maybe you need to be in a group mentorship program rather than a traditional one-on-one -on -one based. All right, so what to do before you end the mentorship? Now, here's, here's some things that I want you to consider before you absolutely say, man, I'm terminating it, we're done, I wanna move on. If you're working through a mentor program, such as through Greek-based, social-based, work-based, church-based, meet with the program supervisor because they're going to be a third party that's not necessarily working in your mentorship team but can provide you some insight and some maybe some ways to better facilitate the relationship that you have with your mentor and might help you save that relationship next um maybe this is more you did a private route where you seeked out this person or you've met with your supervisor and you've kind of found some some things that you can help facilitate with communicate with your mentor your concerns um if it's a time commitment situation that's something that needs to be addressed if it's a you feel like you're mismatched it might be because maybe you and that person have have not communicated enough outside of the mentorness of your relationship and so you don't feel like you know that person or can be connected with that person if you're not if you cannot communicate your concerns, that's probably going to cause your relationship to not be as successful, okay? Now, these are the two things that I would definitely suggest before you end it. But if you do decide to end your mentorship, the last thing I want you to do is to thank your mentor for their assistance and guidance. So let them know that um, you've decided to move on with someone else or maybe you've decided just to just to take some time off, or whatever the case may be. Um, if you thank your mentor for their assistance and guidance, that's going to put you in a good position. Not only um, if maybe you would like for them to recommend someone to you that maybe would be a better fit, or you never know, you might have to work with this person again, or you maybe you decide a year from now, you know what, we actually probably got along better than I thought, or we were better connected than, than I thought at the time. And if you are respectful of them and you thank them for their assistance and guidance, you could probably pick up that mentor, that mentor um, relationship again. But if you just kind of cut them off and 
move away and don't really respect them enough to say thank you for their time and efforts. Because like I said, they're probably a very busy person. You're gonna you're going to probably cut some ties that could possibly hurt you in the end. So again, make sure if you do decide whether to continue going and the mentorship program is ended because um, maybe the time we're good, like we no longer need that mentorship, or you decide to end because it's you're not connecting and it's it's not a good match, make sure you thank your mentor for their assistance and guidance. All right, so this is my presentation for Where's the Real Adult? tips and tools for finding the right mentor for you. I want to thank you so much for taking time to watch this webinar and I really appreciate um, any great feedback you have or questions that you may have about this program and um, I want to thank SWADA for allowing me to assist with their Striving for Greater Professionals webinar series. So for more information or to connect with me, you can either email me at helenmore at kkpsi.org you can also check me out on Facebook at Helen K. Park, which is my married name, or also Instagram at HelenRuthie14. Those are the gr three great realms that if you're wanting to communicate more about this, or if you'd like to get some more suggestions, or maybe you have suggestions that I could add to this tips and tools webinar, um, I'd love to hear from you. Again, thank you so much for taking some time to watch this webinar series. I hope that you've enjoyed, and I hope you have a blessed day.